Welcome to the Fitness Queens podcast, empowering your mind and sculpting your body. Join your hosts, multiple fitness world champions, Alicia Kirios and Stephanie McHugh, as we explore all things female health, training, competing, mindset, and living the fitness life every day. Okay, welcome everybody to the latest edition of the We Fitness Queens podcast with my beautiful co-host, Stephanie McHugh. Oh. Hello, everyone, and hello, my beautiful Ali. How are you feeling? Oh my gosh, I feel like it's oh. already been too many weeks since I've seen you. Um, but large and in up. charge, lady. Large <laughs> and in charge. Like actually, though, we're we're coming into the thirty fourth week, so we we literally, mm. as of Wednesday, we're only four weeks away from from going into hospital That's and having the season and having her right. And oh I my gosh, say, it is in the last two weeks that I'm just really noticing she's growing I'm expanding you just feel heavy just, achy just now, your abs it's like uh, yeah it's it's feeling it's, all the things yeah all of the things and I think I'm probably there's I was actually at the doctors yesterday and I was explaining to her how different some of the things that I'm feeling are this time with her versus with George. And I'm feeling things I didn't feel last time. And we think it's probably because these two have been quite close together and also that it was a C-section, mm-hmm. right? So even though I had rehabilitated and everything was good before I went and had the you know next pregnancy start, it was still a situation where, you know, you're cutting through all this muscle. You're still going to have yeah, absolutely. elements of, you know, there's scar tissue, there's still healing processes, a level of weakness there. So, yeah. You're barely healing and recovering. Basically, and then you, you know, I don't know how women that I know have pumped out four under the age of five back to back. I don't know how everything's still hanging in. They're machines. Like, I'm like, I mean, we are made to do this. <laughs> Um, so all power to women that have multiple children. Hundred oh, uh, percent. Oh, oh yeah, my God. I admire all of you. Honestly, I just watch <laughs> my clients that go through pregnancies and then like the postpartum part. And um, I actually uh, one of my poor clients actually pushed a little bit too hard and uh, actually ended up you know with a little bit of some um, you know like just the how do I say a diastasis recti. Diastasis recti. Like, so if she has the ab separation, yeah. The Did ab she separation. need surgery? No, no, it didn't get to the point where it's that severe. It's just like, you yeah. know what, you're pushing it and you didn't listen. You're, you know, trying to go yeah. back into the Correct. core work and you're rushing back right. into you know, doing uh, loaded, you know, obviously yeah. work onto the core. Right. And um, as we always preach, and I, look, I haven't been through this myself, but it's like, hey, I know, of course, the timeline and how we should approach this, but you're definitely, you know, already can tell doing you're too listening much too soon. You're doing too much. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just got that message this week. It's like, oh no, I think I think I think I might, you know, I got diagnosed. Uh, my doctor's kind of like seeing a little, you know, a little separation. Yeah. Let's, let's cut back. And I mean, these yeah. are the things that you always even mention. It's like the yeah. number one thing of recovery of postpartum. Got to be careful. And even now in my training schedule and the way I've been approaching training, um, there are things that have now come off the table for me and things that have been adjusted and alternated in this last what would have been, I started my new program about um, six weeks out from birth. So it's literally going to be my last six week block before I go into a six week completely off phase post the C-section. But in this block, there are certain things that definitely got modified and I'm no longer capable of, I looked at all my data actually just yesterday because you guys know what I'm like, I'm a data freak. Um, and I looked at well, um, data, guys. <laughs> just even my polar, you know, assessment of where, you know, my calories burn and my heart rate were because I'm trying to make sure that I'm not under eating at all on any given day for her growth. So I'm keeping a track of what I'm actually expending. And obviously, because my movement has decreased a little bit, I'm noticing the changes. I'm noticing you know, the same Increase. level of, yeah, the same level yeah. of outputs, not, uh, it's not as intense on my heart rate anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm not able to push it like I was looking at all my numbers. I was still progressively loading up until probably about 10 days, 14 days ago. Mm-hmm. And it's now so. I'm just literally maintaining at a weight that feels um, relatively comfortable, no doming because I'm constantly checking mm-hmm. the abdominal um, separation for any yeah. kind of doming through it. And then it's about just adding where I can maybe an extra rep or so rather than load. 
because any kind of additional load at this point in time is way too much pressure on the um, abdominal um, area and way too much doming happening. So it's been, yeah, it's been super interesting, but this is good for anyone that is listening to this, that's going through pregnancy, about to go through pregnancy or is even coming out the other side Mm -hmm. of it postpartum now is you really should be looking at these things at every phase and every trimester reassessing where things are at. And I'm just doing a constant little check on things, even in every session, you know, like, I will I will physically put a hand on the movement patterns where I can onto the actual separated points to make sure there's no doming coming through. Oh, yeah. I have a proper stru- structure and setup for pelvic floor and core sitting of the abs before I even initiate a lift. Um, there's a whole bunch of things I'm thinking Great about. Tips, Sally. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome information. Important. Yeah. And because and this is so close to George, what we did notice is that I have, and I know I talked about this on a previous episode, a little bit more separation earlier with her um and it's like higher up at the top of my abdominal and then right around the belly button and she's not aggressively bigger at all by any stretch of the imagination than George was and I'm not massively different in size in my stomach I'm probably probably on par but because like I said it's a back-to-back you do get that lit- like it is your a body is pressure. yeah your body is it's actually kind of recovering kind of feeling it Actually, what I was imagining what you after everything you're saying here, it's kind of like, you know, the competitors when they're going through multiple preps, like multiple Correct. preps in a year, they can't really recover in here. Their immune yeah. system gets affected. I mean, we obviously can't really heal and recover. Our ligaments start really getting uh, suffered as well. So we, our joints feel like crap. We honestly feel, I feel like a rusty, <laughs> like yeah. just old, you know, right. just clunky um person and that's that's because we normally are just not healing in your case you really had a a small gap in between um, it has been like back to back and yeah and look as we've talked about you know this is my this is my second rodeo if you know what I mean and this is Mm -hmm. my literal forever family and Mm -hmm. I didn't I wasn't blessed with finding that person that was my forever person in my early 20s so I'm doing this at the next chapter in my life where most people would be like man I thought to doing that a long gone here I am just going I know this is what this is what I I love the time was not on my side (laughs) story your story I mean, it's, it's just one of those that moves because so many people just already label, okay, if this era is over, I can't yeah, do this not. anymore, or it's, you know, uh, too late just to even have a family and or to find my person, right? Like exactly. I think it might've been exactly. even time where exactly. you were just maybe thinking this is not going to be, I'm not in the dating you know, realm and I yeah. don't want to find yeah. uh, anyone else or it's not like you don't want to find them you just don't think you're going to anymore that's and, and that's it yeah. a lot of women think if I haven't already found them by the time I'm like mid-30s and it's never going to happen or even 40, yeah yeah and I'm like well oh, I don't necessarily agree with that I think you know your person is going to find you you're not necessarily always going to find I them agree. You at least I expect agree. It, right and one of the most beautiful was- relationships was actually a, a couple that didn't meet until their late 50s um and it was it was just one of the they both have a you know a long life and they just met you know just in within circles right like circle of friends like just interconnected and it was one of the most beautiful things of like watching them relive like but That's like right. if they were 20 years old I'm like yeah. this is the love and this is the kind of aspiration that I think a lot of people lose in life as far as finding romance again yeah. and it's like yeah. you can actually be in that romantic you know relationship at 60 years old like this is what I witnessed from them and I'm like you guys yep. are seriously the most adorable couple I've ever <laughs> you know come across <sighs> because we act you know like they're yes. just so fresh and they still treat each other like if they were 20s yes. or meeting each other so um there is a lot of hope and, and there's gonna be to be completely cool. honest like I don't even look at my situation and go you know, I feel like I've left it late. I don't even feel like, well, for starters, I still feel like I'm 18 most days. Like, <laughs> I, And that's not even, if I'm honest with you, I don't even feel anywhere near my age physically. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not, mm-hmm. I don't have any signs of any joint issues. You know, I've got no arthritis. I've got no health conditions. I've got like I still feel like I am capable of executing everything like I used to execute in my early 20s. Like I don't feel restricted by anything. So it's Mm -hmm. like, 
why would this really affect me you know and and it hasn't but it's just it's interesting to see these back-to-back pregnancies differences because it's the body showing me that hey you know what this magnificent thing we do is actually quite stressful and quite taxing and there is probably a need for a little bit more recovery but time wasn't mm-hmm. on my side so we couldn't and um it is what it is I didn't get to do my yeah. decade apart babies like I normally would <laughs> but you know that's what we anticipate sometimes you think you're going to plan out okay this is my yeah. plan and that's just not how your plan <laughs> goes yeah, exactly. uh, but you're you're going in and guys I everywhere across the world, we're going into the holidays and um, you're going to be having a little downtime during yeah. these holidays now. So, so you're going to so a little, to it. yeah, like a little less move, not movement as much as like as less taxing movement, right? Mm. So for you, you're going to be much more in maintenance, um, which is a great place to be. I think it's, yeah. it's really uh, a gonna nice. Going to be trying to prepare. hold, going to be trying to hold on to, you know, the mass that I've got leading into birth so that when I come out and I've got that six weeks where I'm unable to actually lift anything, um, then I'm not wasting away. You know what I mean? And then I don't get to the other side of it and go, oh my gosh, you know, I've got nothing left, which can be a real thing. So, you know, we actually thought today coming on and talking about tips for surviving the holidays was a great topic of conversation for the podcast because, You are right, Steph. There is an opportunity for a lot of people here to have, you know, a really joyful holiday, but it can also bring all these challenges, Mm. especially in terms of health and wellness, right? Oh, Um, yeah. All the (laughs) the questions I think, well, the number one question that I get is like, how do I eat my meal plan during the holidays or how do I stay on course, you know, with my nutrition? I think that's probably the most asked, you know, frequent question. And, you know, I think people really do get obsessed. I, I I remember years ago, I read this quote that it just hit me and it made me laugh so hard. And it it's still to this day, it, it just hits because, I mean, people are always so worried about what they eat between, you know, Christmas and New Year's during the holidays, when in reality, they don't really care about what they eat between New Year's and Christmas. <laughs> and it's like, it's fine. you know, you need to actually check yourself and worry about what you eat between the New Year and the Christmas date rather than, oh, okay, what, what do I do? Crash diet? You know, like, what do I do to fix my, my next two weeks or my last three weeks of the year? It's like, guys, you don't need to stress oh so much. Be present. Like, uh, don't get me wrong. We're it's give so me funny, time. but it's so <laughs> true. Right. And we do see this stuff and, you know, look, navigating social events are 100% probably the thing that give most people anxiety. Cause they're like, mm-hmm. all right, well, I'm going into this complete free for all and I have no way to control it or hey they're just really honest and they know that every year for their you know work function they are going to literally be white girl wasted throwing up in the gutter out the front hoping their uber driver turns up and lets them in the car right like they know that it's going to be like that and I've got so many clients who actually physically tell me hey I'm I'm going to be sideways for three days you know what I mean like and they'll have that conversation. I love like, the honesty. Yeah, I love exactly. Honest exactly. Clients. Honestly, I do too. Exactly. Like, and you know, it's going to be one of those weeks. It's like, <laughs> God, please eat protein. It's like, can we at least eat protein, man? And I think, yeah, I think that it's literally just understanding and getting really honest with yourself. So I always say to them, hey, I much prefer knowing that that one work function that we know is going to literally be, uh, you know, complete headache and hangover for the next three days that we're aware of that like I'd rather know that than tell me hey I'm gonna go and I'm gonna have two drinks and then I'm and I'm I'm not gonna have anything else and then you wake up two Mm. days later in some random place going I don't even remember my name you know like I'd much rather Yeah, I'd much rather you not blow your expectations out the water and instead be like honest and say, hey, you know, I'm going to be actually completely free for all on that evening. And then you can structure the rest of your week so that you minimize the effects of the alcohol abuse and you also recover faster, right? So Mm -hmm. I think number one is be honest about what you've got on and what you're going to actually do. So where is the hair going to be let down the most at which events and what does that look like Um, with honesty, like an honest stock take of what it's going to look like. And then I think it's setting some boundaries around 
everything else around it. Do you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. you don't need to go for the free for all at every single potential invite you get, but you might just choose one event where, you know, you won't be just having a single drink. You'll be having a bottle, you know, and be honest (laughs) about that. (laughs) You already know, I'll I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's going to be a little more about a bottle of wine tonight rather than just a glass. And um, I think that that's the best way to put it. It's like planning ahead. So our first tip is, Plan ahead. Look, look at what you're going to be dealing with. Um, are there multiple events? Which one is maybe more of a work, yeah. you know, a type of, you know, type of event or family gathering? Or is it going to be like just your really intimate friends where you might let loose and you might go crazy, like Ali is saying? Um, you know, you have those group of people that you you tend to maybe be a little bit more, you know, chill with and maybe just eat yeah. a little bit and others you'd maybe drink more and socialize with and go out with. So it's understanding kind of where, what you're walking into and then yeah. strategically planning maybe your mm-hmm. meal ahead of time. If there is going to be some, some foods already that, you know, are going to be there. Um, if there's going to be alcohol present on understanding, you know, the nutrition labels and knowing your sugary, you know, type of alcohol versus, you know, some that are essentially a little lower calorie and lower sugar. So understanding kind and, of what's a better alternative. Yeah. And I also think too, you know, when you're looking at this, just take a quick mental reflection on where you're at in the year like you know do you have some impending deadline and goal where it's imperative that you meet a weight target or a performance objective or you know a physical aesthetic goal because if you don't then it takes the pressure off somewhat and I think it's it gives you some sort of freedom and flexibility to look at this with a more balanced mindset too, you know, where you don't go, I'm going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and I'm going to eat 900 calories every day for the next 10 days so that I can have 5,000 calories on my one day and do dumb shit like that because you don't need to. My point is, exactly. My point is there should be no risk and reward based strategies applied to this time of the year. There should just be a set of, you know, logical level reasoning to sustain some balance and to just have a bit of a strategy about what where you're going, what you're doing, and to what limit you're going to take things to, right? And my number one thing would be if you are in fact in a position where you have some restriction on you because you do have a deadline or a goal or a competition or some sort of sporting event right around the corner, then I would 100% discuss with maybe your loved ones and maybe even roundtable it with people that, you know, in your in your inner circle, how do you actually decline an invitation? Like where do you decide what Being invitations? Yeah, what invitations are good for you? What ones can you accept? Maybe have a yeah. threshold on the number you accept so you can still have some flexibility at at least one or two or three of them, um, but you don't go to all 50 that you get invited to. Yeah, and then sister. know how am I going to let these people down? without feeling guilty or um, FOMO for doing so, right? So I think that's probably the next thing I would talk about when it comes to, you know, understanding your goal, where you're at, and then understanding where you're going to actually let your hair down and by how much. Go that one step further and go, if it's relevant for me, how do I let people down and decline an invitation because I find a lot of people really struggle with this and it's a case of I just can't say no what do you mean you can't say no yes you can <laughs> but yeah, yeah you can how yeah you well, about is, it would be the so question. this is actually very common um even I think across the year it's not just at the holidays right, right? like when you get invited for anything it's like you don't know how to say no and have those boundaries yeah and I think that it really does come down to people pleasing and you know probably feeling the need you know, to make them happy and yeah. you're not, you know, caring about how you're going to feel afterwards, which might be guilty, might be overfed, overdrink, <laughs> all the things, you know, like, so you might, you know, just need to kind of, rea- you know, really check and Ali, you, you said it so well, it's don't lie to yourself and just really be real yeah. about um, understanding the people, the settings, and maybe where your triggers are. And it's yeah. okay. Like, I, I learn so much about myself at every event, even to this day. Like I, no matter where I go, I can pre-plan and, and, you know, ahead of time, I'll already have some, some just quick, you know, things behind my head, just in case like plan A, plan B, yeah. plan C. 
<laughs> you know, or put it in, uh, it. they don't have wine. What else would I drink? You know, because if they don't yeah. have wine that I normally would yeah. go for, like a Cabernet, then I'm going to probably go for like a vodka, right? Like, but yeah. if they don't have vodka, what am I going to do here? Right. I'm like, well, I really don't care for beer. I'm like, I really don't, you know, like, yeah. so I would have probably just gone to like a mocktail if they had something that was low calorie or low carb. Right. Like, but this is my, my, my like actual totem pole here, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> this is depending on the event. So but this is just alcohol related. I think most of the people are usually stressing about the foods. So a good example I find is being able to take your own dish. Um, yeah. That is a good way to be able to participate and not yeah. feeling like enabled yeah. to say, yes, I'm coming to your party and have to eat everything that you're, you know, having. So this way you can kind of mix in yeah. some, some, you know, maybe more nutritious meals and maybe even with that, with the alcohol to you bring, bring some to uh, the event. But in order to say no, I think it really does come down to you truly just, if this doesn't mean make an excuse, but being real with them and saying, I'm yeah. currently with the goal of, you know, yeah. maybe a competition or, yeah. you know, I have this uh, event that I, yeah. I am really planning and getting physically ready for. So it's it's really important for me to not be in this setting. So I apologize that I can't participate this time, but I'll love to come next time. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. thank you for, thank you for inviting. And I would like, I would love for you to still invite me next time. Please don't, <laughs> right? Like yeah. you're not, people are fearful yeah. of if they say no, that they're not going to be invited next time. And that's not, if people don't understand you have goals and that you actually have, you know, discipline, because that's some good yeah. discipline right there. And if people, most people will respect it, I think. I think so my- too. And I think over the years, I've found that, you know, the more honest, upfront and open you are about a situation, mm-hmm. the better received it is, right? And at least then it's not the situation where you're like, oh, I'm unwell or I can't come because of yeah. this. Oh. See your Instagram story and like that bitch, she's out yeah. doing so-and-so or I just saw her in her garden doing so-and-so. <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. I, you know, you know just I mean? be on, just tell them you've exactly. got to go to the competition. Exactly. You can blame it on your coach. Honestly, I always tell my clients to blame it on me. Like, just tell them that I told them to stay in. <laughs> so like, fault. She said, I can't go. Yeah, I can't go. <laughs> she said, I have to stay in and follow my plan. You know, okay. so. And look, I think that you're right. I think that with social settings, especially around the festive season, it comes down to the twofold and actually triple threat to people is. Sometimes they don't have access to a gym, depending upon where they're holidaying, where their family's staying, if they're, you know, on an island, on a beach, in a remote location. Then you've also got the shutdown periods that happen inside of, you know, a lot of commercial gyms across those, you know, respective public holidays. And then you've got excessive food in family settings. Mm. They can't say no and then add on the alcohol. So it's the triple (laughs) threat of less movement to no movement how do i control that output and then on top of that overconsumption, excessive food intake and alcohol to boot so i think not only getting a side of okay these are the events that i'm going to choose to drink and lay my hair down on so then you know what that event looks like then setting up the scene for okay and then for the rest of the events this is what the food will look like. These will be my rough options. This, these are the ones where I'm actually going to let, you know, myself indulge and I'll have desserts or I'll have this or I'll have that. These are the ones where I will stick relatively to plan and I can do so. And I think, again, knowing those, um, you know, environments, settings, and also understanding, you know, venue, if it's a particular, um, you know, social uh, event where it's actually being catered to, then knowing what that catering will be helps. If it's a family event, then I think Steph hit the nail on the head. Take food, just Just take take stuff, prepare stuff, take stuff, take stuff that's like a healthy alternative to a traditional dish. um, So everyone will enjoy it, but where you still know what's in it, right? And then you can still, what I always say to my athletes is this, you can then choose your dishes. If you take something that would be an entree, something that would be a main and something that would be a dessert, you know what's in all of them. If you have, say, two-thirds the serving of your own dish, you've got that two-thirds control, then you can still taste everything else minimally to make up the rest of your plate. And yeah. I always work when it comes to this time of the year on the My Plate Guide where it's like just have one plate. You don't need to go back for five. 
and yeah. don't fill it so that it overflows like you know just the top like a mountain yeah. the and face style <laughs> exactly and think you know fist size protein half a plate of veg, veg or salad salad you know a quarter of your plate is going to be carbohydrate or grain and then you can have a little bit of dessert you know like if you just you'll be stuffed like that, by then yeah you are quite safe so yes, i think you will yeah take your own dishes make those healthy alternatives to traditional dishes and approach the plates as a my plate setting rather than just freaking out because you don't have a scale and let's just add a whole going, bunch i don't have a scale to so stuff it all i'll start mm-hmm. the diet tomorrow because i don't know how many times we hear that too Ooh, so especially diet after the holidays right <laughs> i think that's actually i really really think that's the most common thing i hear yeah. is oh no i don't i don't want to start right now because I, it's the holiday Christmas. and i'm not i'm not going to commit 100 percent. and it's like okay if you're already telling yourself this you're setting yourself up for failure mm-hmm. because if you're letting your mind actually think that you can just do whatever from now until the new year, you're going to set yourself up to have the worst January because that's why you're going to fail because you're going to not see results. You're going to feel like this is just too hard. I'm going from a massive surplus to now a cut, which is what most people (laughs) technically do. It's like they really go into just eating lettuce and no carbs. And, and it's like, you just came from eating the most highest calorie dense foods and you expect yourself to succeed on a low carb or no carb diet. Um, no, this is why you're not able to sustain, obviously, your, you know, just your program or even, you know, a few weeks on end. So exactly. when we're really thinking this way, we have to shift our mind going into, you know, this next few weeks, not just, let's say your events. If we're just nailing the events, then we might leave that other 75% on the table that might have yeah. a lot of issues too, which might be the snacking and all these like, God, oh, here in America, Ali, I can't even stress to you how much <laughs> the fucking like You know what actually nails people in America peppermint too. mocha. <laughs> I was just going to say, the thing that nails people in America is it's all the liquid calories because all of a sudden oh you don't have gosh. all the eggnog, oh, ginger. Talk about the pumpkin you know, spice and the, the gingerbread. Ginger it's like <laughs> you have all these creamy thick oh, sugar filled baby yummy <laughs> drinks that just get forgotten to be tracked that add about 500 mm. to 800 calories extra to it's the day it blows my it's mind insane. it blows, it blows my mind. mind it, it really in going back to the plate analogy that you were giving them and as an example i i just recently went for you know just a dinner um to a Brazilian steakhouse, which is essentially like um, all you can eat steak, yeah, I love but with it. I love a salad, it. like a salad bar that you can, you know, yeah. all you can eat as well. Let me tell you, even though it's healthy food that is given to you there, I left feeling like shit. I yeah. was like, I can't, why did I do this to myself? Like, why do, we, <laughs> why do people set you up to do this? Like, buffets should be banned. Like, they should honestly be <laughs> banned everywhere because we just yeah. overstuff yourself. You you actually think you're a garbage disposal and you, like, <laughs> stuff yourself and just eat and eat until, you, even when your body says, I don't want to eat no more, you're like, but you need to eat. So you, like, yeah. keep stuffing yourself. And this brought me back to why I wanted to talk about the holidays, because I find that when these, you know, weeks come, we start stuffing the pantry. We start stuffing our, maybe from yeah. Thanksgiving here in America, yeah. we have all these leftovers. Everyone's yeah. just eating their leftovers for weeks on end. It feels like, even though you're, you know, you know what I'm saying? You cook in these yeah. massive, you know, yeah. casserole types. And next thing you know, you're trying to feed a family of 10 and it's only two people in your house. So <laughs> it's like, what, what are it's you doing? So true. Yourself? I'm it's just giving so you like what happens here during yeah. the holidays. And then we tend to, you know, of course, lose a little bit of the activity. It gets colder here. We're in winter months. Um, I'm freezing, as you can already tell. I'm like in a freaking like flush, <laughs> flush jacket here. Um, so it's it's really about movement, overeating, and not setting yourself up to have structure around protein. And I yeah. was actually kidding when I say when my clients go on the deep end, when they maybe, you know, don't really eat enough and they're just maybe drinking or partying. It's, it's like, look, if you can at least sustain yourself with eating protein and getting all these other liquid calories yeah. and at least your body's going to withhold itself. It's not going to go into this, honestly, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to wither. Like you feel yeah. like you're with 
right? Like your body, your bones yeah. feel even frail when you go into those, you know, oh, just chronic funny. episodes. Um, so really trying to prioritize your protein. So going into the next tip is, is really helping you to look at your plate and say, maybe you didn't take a dish. Maybe you didn't, you know, cook anything and you just went to grandma's um, or to aunts or someone and they, they did all the cooking. So you just want to go to protein first, go and stuff your plate with more yeah. protein. Um, if you're going to eat a second plate, maybe, you know, you're not American. I mean, you're not Australian, you're American <laughs> and you're, you know, you're, you're used to seconds and you're used to thirds, then just go for the, the plate with more protein and then yeah. fill it up with some carbs and leaving the dessert for last, like actually yeah. how it should, because some people will, I'll notice will go for that pumpkin pie or, you know, straight to the cheesecake yeah. and, and like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I freaking love cheesecake, but that's actually the reason why I'll take Cake, a cheesecake to where I'm going. If I'm going to like a hot it. Like that. <laughs> yeah, because I want to eat it. I'm like, I don't want to be staring at this cheesecake and it's calling my name. So mm -hmm. I want to like be able to participate. So I'll take, so this is a good example for my listeners here. It's like, if you're, you know, already aware of how bad a cheesecake context of nutrition is, it's nothing but fat and carbs and sugars. Right. Um, what I would do is replace it, you know, replace the the cream cheese from it being all whole cream, right? To actually a either fat free cream or a low fat uh, cream cheese. You can add protein. You can add like a vanilla protein or like an oatmeal or pumpkin spice kind of an oatmeal. Um, I'm sorry, protein powder and literally just some almond milk. You add maybe even I'm I'm yeah. telling you how to make my pumpkin uh, low fat ah. cheesecake. I add like a half little pumpkin um, puree. Um, you know, can and literally once you blend it and you add a little bit of Splenda as you know your sweetener, or you can do monk fruit or yeah. a sweetener that's not all the freaking refined sugar. Exactly. And gosh, you get an incredible consistency. You put it in the fridge and okay, here you go. You can you know make some graham cracker crust or you can get a low fat one that's already pre made, already macro friendly. I can literally track that whole cake, the whole thing, and. You can even start telling, it's a really easy conversation piece, by the way, at your event, because yeah. now you're telling everybody, I want you to have, you know, a piece of my cake here. It's, it tastes, yeah. I mean, maybe it tastes just like the full, full cream one, but you'll be shocked how many people you convert over to think maybe yeah. this is a really good alternative. Thank you for giving me a little bit of health yeah. tip and inspiring me to maybe make a change back home exactly. because I, I do think that people forget that when you do something good and you do something healthy, it even though it gets criticism from some people, it's going to actually spark motivation and inspiration for others. Exactly. And you don't know who is looking at you and saying, wow, they actually brought a cake and mm, it actually tastes good. Like, oh my exactly. gosh, wow, maybe I should try. I'm going to start trying to do this. And it makes a change and you're changing people's lives. And I know I'm <laughs> kind of going a little deeper there, but yeah, it all can start from a cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a totally different spin on cheesecake for me. Yeah. Like, oh my God. <laughs> but you're so right. And, and I think that, you know, look, it's, it's not just about stepping into a social space and talking about the things you can't do. It's about taking into the social space alternatives, right? And then guiding people into a new direction. And, you know, one of the things that I always talk with people about is creating space for activities. So, you know, when you're stepping into this environment okay. too, instead of it being about just literally sitting on a deck chair with a can full of some alcoholic beverage in your hand and plates after plates of food, maybe encouraging people to get up and take part in something, whether or not, you know, like in Australia, we're hot in Christmas and it's like, like blisteringly hot, right? So weird. Christmas, it's horrible. <laughs> and um, we will literally do like beach cricket and everything. Usually you try to get as close to the water as you can. So it'll be like beach volleyball, beach cricket, beach soccer. It'll be in a park when somewhere. You guys are more fit than us. Yeah. Like it's, do you know what I mean? We we try to get some activities going and, you know, some great things to play is like, you know, there's like frisbees in the park. It's, there's so many different things you can do, but even just getting out with the kids, if you're in an environment where you've got cousins, nieces, nephews, your own kids, getting like, you know, um, we have like the big, the Nerf guns, the big water pistols and stuff and playing like water fights, <laughs> getting in and out of pools, like, 
running around after them and getting them active. So there's That's snowball like, fights oh. here, Ali. Like there's so, snowball fights and we have well, people there that are go. they they're, they're called snowbirds they... trying to get away from the snow and try to go to the beach. So they're oh. called snowbirds literally trying to leave, leave exactly. the north to come exactly. to the south because we're in the Why south. You- <laughs> finding those things right where relevant to whatever your weather dictates um where you're doing things and and it might not even be that you're outdoors doing things but you might do something indoors that's still active yeah. you know and even just oh my god getting up way more board practice, games here just in the holiday board game <laughs> exactly like whatever you want to do but point dominoes movement and it not just <laughs> there's no movement in these board games i'm sorry i'm like <laughs> I'm like, Ali, you guys really do have a pretty cool Christmas. Because I mean, we really can only do maybe some like, yeah, if you go skiing and snowboarding and you're at an actual ski lodge or like a resort like that, or you go to your own outside <laughs> and create <laughs> your own like street <laughs> kind of slide with all the kids and stuff. So no, there's really not, I mean, activities to do outdoors, but there are things already like made to do indoors, like like a top golf setting. Like I'm not saying yeah. that that's something. Um, yep. that you want to take and don't Christmas you guys have too, like but... the virtual games so we can yeah, do like interactive virtual games yeah there's, things you, games. Yeah, there's like, things you can do yeah but if you're talking about activity like let's say actual activity i would say maybe even just shopping i'm not kidding like i never yeah. go back just so movement just shopping. in general it's moving it's like being yeah. able to go out and um meet being able to take some steps because it is pretty chilly I mean, really, really cold in the north. I mean, these people are below zero. I so know. like really lucky, right? <laughs> yeah, we're not. I mean, I, I was bitching and it's barely got below 50s. And I'm like, oh my God, it got so cold. But it, it's of course very cold up north right now. And we're starting to get some of the winter by end. Entering January and February, we get extremely cold. We actually get more of a frost and we don't have any um mountains, so we don't have any protection from the wind. So that makes everything that much colder here in Texas. Um, but yeah, no, winter is is really about cozying up and which is why I find that most people layer up and um, like to, you know, of course, kind of hide themselves, which is, I've taken advantage of that. I really do. I think that the, the winter is a good time, you know, to be able to do your building season and to be able to kind of have those yeah. layers here in America. It's probably opposite for you guys. You guys, you know, are in bikinis oh, and stuff probably- yeah, Wearing like next to nothing not the, the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so probably not the ideal time, but I do think that having you know your body created now for the summer, so in, it's right. opposite for you guys. It would be you know in the summer you're building that winter body. That's so weird. <laughs> yeah, we're you know building that summer body in the winter. Oh. So if you you know are in a building phase, use the food. You know, you capitalize on it and um go get stronger, lift heavier. You know, you're in a surplus. Right. Still additional trained. yeah just still you know use that extra fuel and uh mm-hmm. facilitate it you know for hopefully some muscle growth if you're training mm-hmm. right so 100%. if you can you know channel what zone you're in of your of your gear if you're in a building or if you're in a cutter you're in a maintenance um then you can strategize how much budget and you know you might have with your you know events um after you've kind of dictated which ones might be worth um going to which ones you're going to stay on plan yeah. Some of the tips that when like I go out to an event and I know I'm going to have maybe a meal item, I'm not really quite sure what it's going to look like. And I think this is where people are like, but I don't know what's going to be on the menu. Yeah. Or I don't know what they're going to serve. Um, it's going to be a lot of different options. So then I'll actually reduce my meals for that day. Um, and I'll, you know, work my work, my whole week around it. So it's yeah. really like what you were talking about. Like if yeah. you know, you're going to have a really big meal. Like for myself, um, I might have less carbs and fats earlier on in the day, and I'll just keep eating a little more higher protein, low carb um, meals leading into this event. So it might look like five, six meals is now reduced to three to four meals because I might have just only had two ish or maybe even three leading into this event. And I might have had that big meal um, in the evening or midday, depending on kind of when that setting was. And then whatever this really turns out to be, I learn how my body also responds uh, the following day. Sometimes your hunger just increases tremendously. Your metabolic rate starts like freaking going through the roof and you're like, oh my God, I'm like a freaking hunger, like just ravenous. And I just can't control this. Then this is when I find a lot of individuals will tap into that. Right. And they'll just keep eating for days on end. So it's like, they keep that same cycle for lots of days 
and they don't shut off. So it's like, I, I revert right back to my normal, let's say meal mm -hmm. schedules. Yeah. yeah. My following day, because it's normally not two days of events. You're making yourself do this for multiple days on end. So yeah. if you have a, a Christmas party, it's not like you're having five back-to-back -back Christmas <laughs> day parties, you know? Yeah. So this you know, go through it. Um, if you fuck up, it's fine. Just go back exactly. to eating your normal deals. Don't do damage control. Don't go do all this crazy 900 calories like you were talking about, Ellie. Oh my God. I've Just seen it and I've heard it. I've heard worse. So yes. Yeah, two no, hours of cardio no, or whatever you think you- Food you know. banking. <laughs> no food banking. But I think too, one of the things I do want to touch on, which is just absolutely unrelated to training and food, but will lead to behavioral and emotional fueled behaviors is handling situations with family that might be difficult. So, you know, where you know you're in that situation where everyone has that one uncle or that aunt or that mother or that something that literally drives them crazy, always has a really inappropriate in comment, um, will have unwanted, you know, opinions Opinion. and advice for you and will always have a way of making you feel like whatever you're wearing or how you physically look right now is a problem. Um, you I probably just, aren't even thinking of that person's 100%. name right now. I know you're thinking of someone's name right now. I guarantee it's going to happen. I guarantee there's always <laughs> someone in every household. And I think that just recognizing that that's going to be potentially something on the cards for you and navigating it with a little bit of preparedness um, is probably key because emotional intelligence, the way you topics topics yeah. are, are always going to come up around family gatherings and mm -hmm. you cannot always avoid them. Right. So yeah. what, what advice would you give anyone on that? Mm -hmm. regard? Especially because, you know, there's always someone that has something snide to say, right. In some way, always. some form. And and I'm actually the one that has a very reactive person. So, you, you know, it's hard to kind of ask me because I'll sometimes say something back and it's like, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that. And then there's, <laughs> you know, like, you know, I bite my tongue because I am very reactive. And sometimes I, you know, have to keep, you know, my thoughts to myself. And I think that that's what I'm exactly what I'm thinking when the individual is telling me what they're thinking. I'm like, you should have just kept that thought to yourself. You know, yeah, the same way. Inside voice. Keep, inside yeah, voice it's like, only. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, man, gosh, I cannot believe you had the audacity in my head, right? This is what I'm thinking, like to even say that. Like, but here I am, like probably looking at them like sideways crazy. Like, <laughs> you actually said that, you know? And, and it's like, you know, silence really is a much better reaction. Yeah. And I, what I mean, it's just kill them with kindness. I, I really mean that. And as much as I could be reactive, it's like, but if you kill them with kindness, there's really not much that they can come back to you with. Like, um, what are they going to talk shit about you of? Like, oh, she smiled back at me. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> oh, she she told me, you know, have a good day. <laughs> like, you, you know, you can't really you know, talk bad about someone that didn't say anything bad. So it's more on like, if you, if you really, really want to open the door, the freaking can of worms of the fight, then yeah, yeah so be it, right? Like you already yeah. know what is about to happen. Yeah. Maybe it's needed to be said. Maybe it's yeah. done. This is, this person has done so much to you. And this was just kind of the last straw and you had to maybe speak up. Then maybe it was your time to maybe say your word, you know, but you will also be aware that that's going to probably cause a lot of problems for that yes. night. You know, yes. so it's again, knowing is that worth messing up your night, messing up with other people's nights? And, I, and you yeah. know, you're going to cop it whichever way you go. So what I mean by that is there's going to be situations where if people know that you're typically usually on a health, you know, train, but then you actually indulge at this setting, they might be asking you questions about, oh, well, should you even be eating that? And, oh, I can't believe you're actually eating that. And they'll make these comments that, that seem is. so you know, um, innocent, but are so loaded. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. really, yes. uh, uh, it, it is a cocked and aimed rifle. And then there'll be the flip side to that, where it will be like, you know, well, why can't you eat what we're eating? Why, why do you need to bring that? Why did you need to bring that meal? And aren't you going to eat all these other things? And I made this specifically for you because I know it's your favorite five million yeah. calorie cheesecake yeah. in front of you. Um, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you, they're the things I think be prepared for. And 
I just know that if you are aware that that might happen for you, just get to it. Yeah, yeah, with a little bit of a, a a little bit of bubble wrap on yourself, so that it, it does give you that level of protection and ability to, as Steph sa- said, you know, remain silent, even if you might be thinking, oh. "Hey, a big middle finger to you, mate," in your head. You don't necessarily. Yeah, have to use one. <laughs> you don't need. You mean, I, like, there's a difference if you go to your best friend and you say, "Man, I can't believe this douchebag," you know, said. Yeah, this exactly. To me. <laughs> like it's just completely different. Like yeah. uh, you really feel a certain way but people are lashing out on you because of what they feel about themselves so the more you continue giving into that the more you're actually you know stooping down to their level so it's Mm -hmm. like you just gotta continue like brushing those things off and not let it get to you and if they make smart snarty remarks you know they're probably jealous of you and so be it like just means that they're 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 you know actually very very envious of you caring a very healthy life or the yeah. fact that you care about your body or that you actually you know give a damn about your health oh my gosh like that is exactly. just such an uh, 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 outstanding thing for some individuals it's like why would you do such a thing it's like oh because I want to live a, a long life and I actually care what I look like and what I feel like and and of course we don't have to react this way it's just they're doing it with these you know, intentions. And it's, we, we just need to kind of understand that a lot of people will never understand why you do what you do. People in your community, like probably listeners on this podcast, you know, people within our, you know, um, just team, everything, like they'll understand why you do what you do. And those are the people that are your people as much as we've actually talked on this topic. It's family is who you claim to be your family. It doesn't mean that it's just because they're blood that they're actually, let's say the best family. And I'm a family person. Let me tell you, if you're my blood, I'll freaking die for you. But it's still one of those things that I have people that are not blood and I'll freaking yeah. die for it because yeah. I call them family and I consider them family. So it's just really understanding that some family members are just very, let's say, um, uh, let's just put that they don't it's love sensitive. themselves. Yeah, but they don't love themselves, right? They don't love themselves. So how are they going to ever really show any type of love to anyone else? So just knowing that, and I'm sure you already know these people are just negative and are always going to have something bad to say. Um, or always just be a Debbie Downer. Or just take away from these people. I'm like running away. It's like they could be in the same place, but I'm gonna be in a complete different part of the whole room. So Mm -hmm. I'll be in the kitchen, you'll be in the living room, and uh vice versa. So it's you know, keep your distance, you know, keep your words to yourself and um find you know people that are uplifting, that are actually you know, actually yeah. positive and maybe yeah. are inspired because you never know who you're actually inspiring. So exactly. remember that, remember that during these exactly. holidays, when you think that, oh, this is maybe not, maybe I should take a break. I don't want people to think I'm being weird by prepping my meals, or I don't want people to think, oh, yeah. she's crazy. What does she think? She's going to become a competitor. Like, I think that's actually the most like uh, demeaning thing that people can say to you. It's like, no exactly. matter where you are in your journey, you can do what you set whatever out to do. Whatever you want. Exactly. Whatever exactly. you want. Whatever you want. So, yeah, that's, that's that's my, I guess, take on that, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> and I also think, too, you know, one of the things that, you know, I always look at around this time of the year and I'm very um, aware of is that it's not always a joyful time for everyone. And there are mm. people out there that are, you know, suffering from the fact that they've lost maybe a substantial number of their family members or they've gone through family breakups and breakdowns and they're in conflict. And so they may not necessarily have that connection and community and family, you know, period for them. So whenever I sort of see that or I know of anyone in that position, I always reach out. I always try to give them a connection point and I always just try to invite them to anything that I might have on or even if it's just to a morning event or it's just some sort of activity that I'm going to go do with some people close to me or my family, I'll try to include people that might not be so you know blessed at that time of the year and I try to remain very aware of those situations because it really is quite a a lonely time for a lot of people you know Um, those that don't have close family or don't feel like you know um, I don't have that tight knit maybe you know type of uh, community even so yeah that's or might even 
be very... living in a foreign country, you know, like, and I've had that situation before where I've invited, you know, people in my team to come and do things with us at different times because they're living in a completely foreign country and all of their family are away and they're unable to even see them for the holidays, you know? So I just always encourage anyone listening to this to maybe think a little bit beyond your own front door and back door and, and think about others at this time of the year too. Cause I think it is, um it is just the best time of the year, but it can be for some people the worst. And I think, you know, just respecting that not everyone may be having the opportunities you've got and maybe just pull some people so in the fold. Because yeah, some people could really use that. But I yeah, hope that <laughs> I hope that a lot of what we've talked about has helped and and if not, given you a giggle because <laughs> there's, exactly. there's you know plenty of stuff that can be like, you know, laughed at at this time of the year for sure. And um and I think there's plenty of fun to be had and you don't need to throw the baby out of the bathwater. We're not asking anyone at this point in time to be a perfectionist because there's no need for it either. You know, just living a solid level of balance with an 80-20 principle throughout this period is really all you should be looking to do. And like we've talked about, just to recap, you know, think about the um, and acknowledge the challenges you're going to face, right? Be aware of them. Then think about the situation, social events that are going to serve you, that you want to participate in, the ones that you're going to get white girl wasted at and or, you know, go sideways on or not. And there's no harm in either of those as long as you're honest, you're aware, and then set the boundaries, have strategies, explore options for healthy food choices and the decision-making and preparation for that. Um, Be present and have levels of deflection where you need it, where you might need to protect yourself from um, unwanted and or potentially insensitive commentary because, you know, let's face it, it's just that time of the year. It's going to be where that comes. And um, try to include others less fortunate than you in things that you're doing because I just think that's a good human thing to do for everyone. It is about being. I think the holidays, I mean, one thing that we have to remember too is I I mean, it's not just a Christmas thing. I think it's more like this is a giving season and it's the time that you can actually tell people you're grateful for them and um, let them know you love them and spend time with them. And that's the best gift that you can give someone. It's by just genuinely being present is a best present. And I think that that's really what we forget because all year we're just, yeah. you know, go, go, go. Yeah. And it's, we're, we're, we're very selfish, you know, throughout the year. Yeah. And I think that this is a good time to you give back or, you know, maybe donate, or even, you know, like you said, invite um, people that are a little less unfortunate or yeah. um, have um, no community or have no family. Right. Great tip. And I think for those that might be still having some anxiety um, over the nutrition and like, man, but Ali, I can't track a hundred percent. Like, you know, I, I just, I feel like just I'm anxious a little. tracking. It's just, just relax. If you <laughs> still need to do some tracking, just do a food diary. Well, I always say like a good way yeah. to not lose like your, a whole, you know, tracking systems or thinking that you actually have to go and figure out what calorie or amount with your weight scale or anything is just like, maybe take a picture. Um, that's a good food yeah, diary. Great one. Um, rather than just having to write it down. I mean, that's a good way to do a food diary, but like, who are you in the middle? Like you're going to make yourself even worse <laughs> talking. <laughs> topic. Look at her entering, you know, right. Her, her stuff, which mm-hmm. is fine, but this is still going back to uh, that conversation that we were just referring to. It's like, people don't understand why you do what you do, but then you might actually teach them how to do it, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so just food diary, right. If you're having those, or if you want to just relax and actually have a moment, but don't go crazy. It's just, don't overindulge. It's just like, you know, really, really listen to those cues. Don't be me at the freaking Brazilian steakhouse. (laughs) I love the Brazilian steakhouses and I love the the Korean barbecues. They're the best. And I'm the same. You know why you feel like crap? You just have so much protein and you get that, you get the thermic meat sweats. You get the, you get that. I ate so much steak and lamb and just (laughs) blank and all the things. So enjoy guys, please enjoy your foods. Enjoy your family. I I really want everyone to be present and not have too much anxiety over this, but I still want you to set yourself up for a new year you know, to hit the ground running and not to be in this, uh, man, what the fuck did I do to myself <laughs> kind of <laughs> attitude when the new year comes. So I hope this episode helps to kind of, you know, plan out and organize these next few weeks for you guys. And uh, we'll be doing, you know, some, some, and some more 
topics here, Sue. We, um, we would love to hear any additional tips or things that have helped you navigate social settings and festive. Well, I just call it the silly season because I feel like everyone gets silly at this time. Um, we would love to hear about it. So, you know, please, by all means, share this episode. Um, share with us some of the things that you find Story. really helpful and really good tips throughout this time because we will share them across our platforms and share them with our respective audience as well. And um, more than anything, just have fun this Christmas, have you know, fun. literally just have fun. And we yeah, will- yeah, I wish I wish we could spend Christmas together. I, know, right? I wish I could see the freaking baby bump. At one some month. point. I'm we going to be able to meet baby girl sure. next yeah. time exactly. because you're going to be exactly. getting her, you know, bursting very, you know, very Ooh. soon. Uh, coming so around the corner before we know it. Like, I'm literally, yeah. I'm just trying to survive the rest of this pregnancy through my Christmas and then she'll be with us, you know, literally just I'm after. I'm so excited for you guys. Well, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you guys have an amazing time. holiday season. Merry Christmas and happy new year's to everybody. Thank we'll you guys. You next time. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks, babe.